syncopean kids. I spoke about syncopean adults at the cardiac boot camp. And for you that came to that, there's going to be a couple of uh, videos that are exactly the same as that. But it's very important. Syncopean kids are about the same as syncopean adults. We've got about 30% of these kids are going to have a syncopal episode by the time they're teenagers. And most of them are not going to be significant. Okay? Most of them are not going to be serious. We don't get paid for the non-serious ones. We get paid for not missing the serious ones. That's the ones we have to pay attention to. So I spoke about this in terms of adults. There is a definition. The problem with syncope is it is a symptom. It is not a condition. We have to work out what's causing that syncope. And this is the definition of syncope. It's a sudden brief loss of consciousness, a loss of postural tone, and a spontaneous recovery. And a spontaneous recovery needs to come to a baseline. So we expect baseline to be achieved within about 30 seconds or so. If baseline isn't achieved within about five minutes, we call that post-ictal. And this is more likely to be a seizure than anything else. In an elderly patient, it may take one or two minutes. But in a child, we should be getting a spontaneous recovery quickly. So let's have a look at a spontaneous recovery. Spelling bee. We get volume. Okay. Loss of postural tone, loss of consciousness, and spontaneous recovery to baseline. A L O D C O I D. That is correct. I use that video a lot because it really gives us the definition. That's what should be happening, okay? If things other than this are happening, we've got to start thinking a little bit more. The approach is very similar to adults. The terms of the way we should be thinking about this, is it cardiac or is it not cardiac? If it's not cardiac, is it some kind of neurological problem? If it's not a neurological problem, all the other causes don't become that important. In fact, cardiac causes of syncope are probably the most important causes of syncope we're going to get. So, 5% will have a cardiac cause. Now, let me make it really easy. If this child comes in, he's got that stenotomy scar, and he's passed out, I don't care if you think it's a breath-holding spell, I don't care what you think it is, this kid gets spoken to cardiology about. Okay? They've got a previous history of anything cardiac and they come in with any of these symptoms. It's cardiac until proven otherwise. I don't care. Okay? Of course, you know, you check the sugar and all the rest of it. But these are the ones we are very careful about. So let's talk about the cardiac stuff. Is there a past history of anything? Is there a familial history of somebody dying suddenly? Is there, you know, brigadas and all the stuff? QT, congenital QTs, you know, are there arrhythmias? Are all the causes of arrhythmias. Goodness gracious. What are we really worried about? We're worried about no prodrome. Somebody just drop. Now you can get all sorts of absency, kind of myoclonic seizures and things that drop like that. That's fine. But no prodrome should concern us. Is there chest pain or palpitations? Does the child actually say, I, f I felt something, something in my chest? That's important. If the kid can give you that story. Does it occur during exertion? Not before, not after. Okay? This, this is in adults as well any syncopal episode during exertion is admission and investigation. Is there an abnormal cardiac exam? Do they have a murmur? Do they have what looks like might be enlarged heart? And when you do an ECG, are there ECG changes? And sometimes you'll get, as Adam showed us, the paediatric ECG on Friday, how to read the paediatric ECG. Is there something on that ECG that doesn't make sense? So kids are right heart dominant. Is this a left heart dominant? Do they have some kind of patent lesion? Is this tetralogy? Is there something else that's going on here? So we've got to think about it. And again, I do ECGs on all of these kids. And we went through the ECGs of syncope in the adult patient, my formula of A squared, B squared, C, W wrong, QT, and the ECGs of PE. We can apply these to kids as well. A squared, acute coronary syndrome, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, B stands for brigadas and blocks, C stands for cardiomyopathy, uh, W stands for WPW, wrong QT stands for wrong QT, long QT, congenital long QT, short QT, and the ECGs of PE. Now the ECGs of PE applying kids, it makes it a little bit difficult because kids are right heart dominant. 
and you might get a, a prominent sort of right axis deviation and PEs. Can kids get PE? Of course they can get PE. Rare in younger kids, certainly more common in the older kids and if they've had some kind of intervention. But the ECGs of PE are important. So acute coronary syndrome. What are we talking about? This 16 year old with shortness of breath and a syncopal episode. Look at that tombstone infarct. We spoke about the subtle changes of ECGs. There's nothing subtle here. Okay? This is an acute infarct. What about this kid here? Had a syncopal episode. He's got an encephalitis, but he's actually got a myocarditis complicating that encephalitis. And he's got a ventricular tachycardia going here. This kid's got a congenital problem. Cardiomyopathy goes into VT, not sustained. Has, has had a few episodes of VF. It can happen on the history. This one here, fantastic ECG of a five-year-old with syncope. If we look at the ECG, we actually see that the P waves are running at a rate of about 100. And the QRSs have no relationship to the P waves. It's a complete heart block. It's a brigada. You've all seen this pattern before some kind of cardiomyopathy, long QT, short QT. Huh? ECGs are important again. So these are the things we have to be careful of. Little or no prodrome, exercise-induced syncope in these kids, any chest pain or palpitations or previous history or family history or long QT or a brigadas or early death or something like that, we've got to be very careful because the cardiac causes are again the most important causes. Is it a neuro cause? Is this a seizure of some sort? Is it an avascular event? Could it be some kind of a steel syndrome of some sort they've got? Could this be a CSF circulation that they've got? Do they have increased pressure? Do they have something that's blocking the circulation? Could it be some other cause? So when we're looking at seizures, we talk about loss of consciousness, and we hopefully look at a prolonged period of altered conscious state. And they might have abnormal movements, but beware because people that have syncopal episodes can have abnormal movements. And the question we can ask as well is, what came first, the seizure or the collapse? Because people that have a seizure usually have a seizure and collapse. Those that have syncope have syncope and then have a seizure, right? They have a collapse and then a seizure versus a seizure and collapse. And so this is an example of some adults, but these, these guys have got vasovagal syncope. My would generalize and they will and start to count in a second. Ein, zwei, you'll hear it. He's asking them to count. See how long? 10 seconds. Multifocal look at this. Doesn't this look like a seizure? High frequency bursts. So they drop and seize rather than seize and drop. It's kind of important. All right, we'll move on. So let's think about it and say, is it cardiac? If it isn't cardiac, is there a chance that this is going to be some kind of neurological cause? And there's all those other things that can go with it, the tongue biting and everything else if it's a seizure. What if it isn't that? Is this an orthostatic kind of course? Think about that. It can be. This is a little algorithm I put together based on the literature just to see what else is going on. What other things are we thinking about? About a quarter of these cases can be psychological. And we talked about the recurrent abdominal pain, as Claire mentioned just then. We talked about the kids that uh, become sick before something's happening at school or because something is happening at school. We talk about all of these things. So l let's make sure that we don't miss the organic cause, but let's be aware of the fact that it could be some other cause as well. So it could be some kind of a conversion disorder where these kids are having these episodes repeatedly but nothing is abnormal. It could be some kind of malingering. Gee, I hate that term in kids, but it's a term that's in the literature. It could be a somatization disorder where these kids have multiple complaints and they tend to be related to other things that are happening in their lives. Kids have got a really stressful time these days. My, when I was a kid, it was really simple. The kids have got, you know, bullying and cyberbullying, and, you know, they've got to keep up with messaging 25 million friends that 
they've never seen before on Facebook. You know, all, it's very stressful. And then they've got to do school stuff. I never did school stuff. I have no idea why I'm up on stage. I don't know why, how I got through any of that. But the kids are stressed today and these things manifest and we see it. Anxiety and hyperventilation, ask the question. And if it's not that, then we go down to pretty much urocardiogenic syncope. One of the things we've got to be careful of, is there something else in kids? Now, syncope of a bad cause in very, very young children is very rare. And think of other things such as breath-holding spells. So have a look at this guy here. About 5% of kids, 6 to 18 months, it resolves. It's an anoxic spell. And so watch this kid here. He gets a pistotonus, and then he gets a bit of blue around the lips. There you go. And blue around the lips. And I start to worry about this point, don't you? Do nothing, though. He's unconscious. Thought he's quiet. You can get on with whatever you were doing. But that, hang on, give him a second. He's going to wake up pretty suddenly, this kid. Kaboom. Oop, and we're up. All right, OK. They don't lead to any problems. But, you know, these things, if you're a parent and this is the first time you've seen this and you bring the patient in, I mean, wow. And in some of these cases, we even admit these kids if the parents are having trouble and can't deal and watch them overnight. So think about syncope um, in kids. It's very similar to the way we approach adults. Cardiac causes are the big causes. Think of neuro causes and think of all the other things that might be doing it. There's a simple algorithm for you that might assist you in having a planned approach so we don't miss anything. Thank you very much.